My name is Chris Cook. I'm the Managing Director of the Office of Communication and Marketing at Texas Tech University and Texas Tech Public Media. Texas Tech University is full of great communicators and together we hope to bring you perspectives and insight that can help you in your field. Communication is what we do every day and it's intricately connected to our success and failures. This is Communicators in a Cart. In 1998, Cliff Kingsbury took Spike Dykes up on his offer to play for the Red Raiders. He went on to set every Texas Tech passing record and several NCAA marks en route to becoming the nation's most prolific passer at the time. During the 20 years since, the Texas Tech head coach has experienced life in the NFL, life as a coach, and life in general. Hey, what's happening? Coach, how you doing, man? Good, how are you? Good, good, good to see you. It's been a long time. Been a long time. You have, uh, I know you're busy. Do you have time to catch up real yeah, quick? Yeah, yeah, let's do I'd it. I'd love to talk to you for a few minutes. Let's do it. Let's go. time did you get in this morning? Kind of our, our tough run for the players is on Wednesday um, at 545. So we all get in and get out there and make sure that everything is going smoothly. See, I saw the video Athletics did uh, a few weeks ago it's on the screen. It said 3.30 a.m. And I thought, good Lord. I know Cliff was early, but I didn't know he was that early. <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, I've found to be able to really uh, continue to work with the offense and coach the quarterbacks, that's the best time for me to knock out the X's and O's and, and the football aspect of things right before. You get a full day's work done before, right, before everybody day, gets right. in and then who knows what's going on. So, so I, I'm going to stop here a minute and we're in front of the Sport Performance Center and the indoor practice facility. A little bit's changed in 20 years since you first got here. It has. This, this facility is, you know, has to be one of the finest in the country. Um, it's awesome to see what it's done for our players and our program. Uh, they love to be in there. They love to hang out. They love to work out. Um, so it's been that aspect. And then recruiting, you know, players show up on campus, and you take them through that, and it's state of the art, and it's first class, and it's just changed the whole dynamic of our program in this area. Uh, so it's been huge for us. Yeah, I know that uh, track and field relate especially as well with this uh, indoor facility, but I can imagine the same effect. Uh, finally being able to go indoors and you've got three fields now to work out on yeah it's it's awesome as you know you know in august those thunderstorms roll off the plains and um, there's lightning associated with it so instead of having to break up practice go inside wait an hour come back you just jog right into the indoor and don't miss a beat so the functionality of it has been huge as well let's see i don't even know where to park this thing over here we'll just park right here that should work yeah i don't think the president's card is getting messed with <laughs> Cliff, thanks for the time. I know it's a busy time of year, so I appreciate you taking yeah, my a pleasure. to sit down. I always like catching up with you, but because um, we, we go back to 99 for me. You've been here for since 98, but uh, it's always a pleasure to catch up. Um, I do have to say I appreciate you not wearing a suit today because I don't want anybody to think I'm trying to do <laughs> Somebody I messed that up. I can't pull off the bow tie, man. They may so still argue. I you still didn't keep it. There was a, a mentioned earlier that Athletics did a video of you recently showing your early morning it was a 3 30 morning and that you get up get to the office and and that that old uh saying that you can get more done before eight o'clock when no one's there than you can in two days sometimes uh it took us through much of your day what do you do at the end of the day when the do you go home and watch film or do you have a vice or something that you watch yeah when i end? when i leave the office i, I kind of leave it there that's always been my philosophy and coaching when you leave the office leave it at the office and so if I get back to the house, I'm usually, I'll eat and watch a Netflix show and, and that's it. You know, Are you so binge watching anything? Or? I was, there was one called Safe that was really good, but I, I need a new new series right now. The Last Chance You just came out, so I'll start watching that. People say you can learn a lot about somebody from their physical and mental toughness. And there are moments where, uh, and probably more than one moment, but particular moments that stick out for someone. One I remember, and I know you've talked about this before, but it's the Texas game where you kind of, you came in, that was your your first significant time. Rob had a, uh, an injury and went out. And there was a play that, um, where, and I think it was Aaron Humphrey, is a Lubbock guy. Yeah. Uh, he came around and he hit you. You guys, I swear you guys went parallel to the ground and he planted. And I thought, oh my God, he's dead. And you popped up and they people were like, oh my God. 
Are there moments during that that season, or maybe even in that game, that you look at as kind of a not necessarily a defining moment, but something that just pushed you to the next level? You know, it started with my dad. My dad was a Vietnam veteran. He was a Marine, and it was always, you're going to get off the field, don't show him weakness. And so, particularly down there in Austin, I'm from New Braunfels, Texas, and I wasn't going to let those guys have that satisfaction. So um, it was a long night. Um, but it was one of those deals, I think, where, where you learn so much from it and it builds and, and down the road. Um, that experience, having that type of struggle definitely paid off. When you started classes at Tech in 98 and you were in the Ross College of Business, what were your career goals at that point? You know, I, I always just wanted to be an NFL quarterback. That was the first thing on my mind when I woke up last thing when I went to sleep um, so I was really one track mind in, in that area but um, you know I got into business because I, I'd always been fascinated with kind of real estate or trading uh, something where you can make a bunch of money and uh, so I loved my experience there at Rawls I had incredible professors and um, was able to get my degree in business management and, and have that backup plan uh, if the football didn't work out. So it sounds like from the beginning you had a, that, that goal was NFL. So as you started progressing and uh, started seeing these records fall, did it just enhance your focus more on the NFL? The more you have success, the more you want it. And um, as Coach Leach came in and, and brought in the high-powered offense and we had great players around us and we were having success throwing the football, it, it kind of became more and more um, apparent that I, I would get a shot at the next level. And uh, I think that just makes you work harder when, when you see it is a tangible goal. And, uh, I was fortunate enough to be around great coaches and great players that, that uh, allowed me to kind of chase that dream. I want to talk about your family. Start with your brother Clint. And you guys had a typical sibling upbringing where you fought, you were competitive, you tattled on each other, but you're also each other's biggest supporter. Yeah, no doubt. My brother, um, you know, he's two years older than me and, and big dude and strong and tough. And um, I, I had a, a big mouth growing up. So I definitely <laughs> I, I owe a lot of my toughness to him and, and some of the beatdowns I had. But he's uh, an incredible person. He's a great football player. He's got his mechanical engineering degree from Texas A&M. Very, very uh, smart person and has done incredibly well for himself. So um, he's one of the best people I've ever met in my life. And I uh, owe a lot to, to him being such a great role model for me growing up. Did he push you for Texas A&M at all? Or or what were those opportunities when you came out of high school? Yeah, I didn't didn't have, you know, obviously growing up in New Braunfels, you watched Texas your entire life, and there were some great players I followed there. And then when he went to Texas A&M, you know, really, really liked that school because he was there and he's my big brother. Um, but didn't, didn't have opportunities to go there. And I'd come out to Texas, Texas football camp growing up just um, because they had a great quarterback coach here named Dick Winder and, and Rick Dykes was here and, and they're well known um, and did that and, and so fell in love with Lovick, fell in love with the people, um, loved the coaching staff and it just kind of worked out that in the end um, they offered me a scholarship and was able to come here. Uh, your father, uh, you mentioned earlier, he coached high, he coached high school for 26 years in New Braunfels and um, was your high school coach. And uh, so he had, that, he had that juggle of dad and high school coach and um, were you a, a field house rat or a gym rat growing up because of that? And did you watch a lot of film with him? Because your dad's a coach, I mean, you want to go to work with him and be around it. And there's all these coaches' kids that you grew up with, and, and you're there all the time. And you see how you know players practice and, and their work ethic and, and the coaches. And you're just picking up different things just by being around it all the time. And, and we weren't a family that would come home and talk football. That was kind of my mom's rule when you got home. It was it. You weren't talking football at the dinner table, but you definitely pick up a lot being a coach's kid. Do we see a lot of those elements from uh, just being around him, the other coaches, even the even the players, the high school players when you were in middle school or, or uh, elementary school? Do we see a lot of those traits in you today? Have you applied I, I, th a lot I think so. As far as the coaches go, I, I've been so fortunate. First off, to grow up around great high school coaches, and then um, you know when you get to college, you have Spike Dykes and Mike Leach, and then you get drafted by Bill Belichick. So I've been very fortunate to be around incredible coaches starting at a young age, and I think you take a little bit of something from each one. Um, I was always paying attention to how they interact with the people and how they treated people, and uh, so that always rubbed off on me. Uh, you, you mentioned your dad in Vietnam, and he was—he uh, received a Purple Heart. He was uh, wounded in combat. Uh, when when were you first told that story? I don't remember exactly, but it wasn't from him. He, he, he wasn't big on, I think, just bringing back those memories. And so he, he didn't ever really talk much about it with us. Um, so it was always through my mom or someone else that would kind of fill us in on the exact story. 
Knowing that story, did that change your perception of him or did you say, yep, that's him? Yeah, I, I had always been inspired, you know, by that story and by his service. He volunteered to Vietnam, he wasn't drafted. You know, I, I never, I've always wondered if I could have done that. And, and just, he's, it's, you know, his service to our country and the sacrifice he's, he made is always, you know, one of the most thing, proud things I have in my life um, because he's, he's such a great man and, and, you know, he had incredible service to our country. Does he, does he find himself uh, biting his tongue or anything after a game just wanting yeah, to talk he's, he's, learned, and he's learned it's just all about support at this, <laughs> this point. He, he's been an incredible support system for me and a fan and he doesn't try to bring up scheme or anything of that nature. It's just, hey, we'll get him next week or hey, great job and keep it rolling. So um, I appreciate that because I'm sure there's times where he'd like to give his, his two cents on, on the football side of things, but it's just all, all love and support. You mentioned your, your mom wouldn't allow football to come into the house or talk about the game that's all left up at the field house. Surely it came up at some points and she probably put her foot down. Yeah, she did. She was a strong lady and she always had a positive energy about her. So she, she had a way of spinning everything positive. So if it came up, she was quick to shut it down and dinner wouldn't be served until that, that type of talk was stopped. <laughs> so your, your mother passed away from cancer in 2005 and she had a tough two-year battle with it. And you once said of her, watching her go through what she went through with cancer, it's hard to have a bad day after that, seeing her show that much courage. Was there a lesson during those two years or, or moments that you learned something about her or learned from her that you did not see prior to that growing up? I think courage, first and foremost, um, you know, go through those surgeries and face them head on because she felt like her family needed her um, first and foremost and then the grace with which she handled everything there were days where she didn't want to see anybody it was coming towards the end but she knew those people needed to see her and, and so she allowed people to come into the house when she was feeling bad weren't feeling up to it um, and that always has stayed with me you know the grace and the courage she showed through that entire process and it was always about someone else even in the last days and, and not about her and she's always she was always inspiring others no question yeah. to, her, to her last day it, she made it about make sure your dad's okay your brother's okay it was always about somebody else yeah you also said um, she's always with me i'm sure she's uh, fired up that she can cheer for the red raiders again uh do you think about her after games talk to her Oh yeah, every day, every day. And she, some of the best friends she ever made in her life were here in Lubbock. And, and those are some of the funnest years we ever had as a family was her and my dad coming out here and, and watching these games and getting to know everybody and, and falling in love with Lubbock. So um, I, I know she's up there cheering like crazy. Draft night, in your, were you at home on draft night? I was here in Lubbock, um, just kind of hanging out and ended up, it, it went longer than I thought. And so I just ended up going to, to Red Lobster so I remember uh, <laughs> Belichick calling me and I was at Red Lobster, so I had to step outside um, and, and talk with him. Tastes pretty good after that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it was good. It's good to get drafted. You get to a point and you kind of just say, hey, whatever happens, happens. You never know how that's going to go. But I remember we just left the house after about the fourth round, went to Red Lobster, and then he called and um, it was a good day. You still drive by that house on... 26th Street? I don't. I'm afraid there may be some like bad juju coming out of there, so <laughs> I don't. But um, I tell the players, you know, stories and um, about the mistakes I made and, and the different, you know, the way Lubbock has changed and the way it stayed the same. And so to have that common ground and be able to tell those stories and talk about your housing situation and sitting in that same seat, uh, that, that's part of the beauty of, of my experience that I've had here, uh, just kind of passing on some of the wisdom I, I learned over the years at Texas Tech. What does it mean to you to be back in Lubbock after stepping foot here 20 years ago as a student athlete, being a model, student, part of student athlete, being a role model athlete, and uh, going off and doing all the experiences you've done, what does it mean to be back at Texas Tech and in Lubbock? Yeah, I mean, it's incredible. I feel honored and humbled every day. Um, first off, to get to live in this community, the people here are the finest in the country uh, everybody knows that um, and then to work for a university that has this type of passion this type of pride this type of student body the way they support our program um, and then share what I've learned from the different experience you talked about where I've been being around different coaches different players it's uh, you know it's like a dream come true and each day I wake up and I have a smile on my face and thrilled to be here and, and excited to try and get this program where, where we all deserve it to be how did all of those experiences working with the different coaches uh, 
being a student in the Rawls College, the different professors you mentioned earlier, how was that impactful on your career? They helped me, helped shape me, helped me get where, where I was able to get, not only as a player, but as, as um, a coach, because the professors and the academics here, um, phenomenal professors and, and kept you engaged and passionate about what they were doing. And then obviously to, to have coach, you know, Spike Dykes to start, who was a legend in West Texas, and then move on to Mike Leach, who's still, uh, you know, a winning coach in college football and, and one of the innov most innovative coaches in the history of the game. I, I couldn't ask for a better scenario. Um, and then they really helped shape and mold, you know, who I am today and um, all the experiences that I've, that I've had. You, you get to do something that a lot of former players uh, miss and don't get to do. When they leave Tech, they no longer come out of the tunnel. Right. And you get to come out of the tunnel every Saturday. Is that, does it, do you still, when you hear the band and the fans and see the mass rider and you're following it down the field and the smoke and everything, do, do you ever just not notice it becomes part of the routine or are you in the moment? No, you're, you're in the moment. I mean, that, that's a special, special deal and, and I don't take it for granted. And I think even more so as a coach because you're so proud of, of those players um, that are running out there with you and, and how much hard work they put in and you know each and everyone's story and what it's taken them to get there that I think it's even more significant to me now to lead that group out there and, and you know be a part of this Texas Tech game day once again. Cliff, I can't thank you enough for your time. Uh, I know you're busy, I know you got a season to prepare for, so just giving us this little amount of time has been uh, special. We appreciate it. I no, appreciate it. Thanks, man. Good appreciate luck. you putting up with me back in the day, too. <laughs> Come a long way. Those are good stories. No doubt. Thank you.